Hey there, today we will be tackling Nernst Potentials. Nernst Potentials are used to look at the transmembrane potential of a cell which is a result of differences in ionic concentrations and the diffusion of ions across a membrane. When at rest, there is no net transport of ions across the membrane. This net transport of zero allows for a resting potential difference across a membrane that can be given as or calculated through a Nernst Potential. The Nernst potential, represented by a capital E, lowercase k, is equal to RT divided by NFK times the natural log of the ion concentration on the outside of the cell, divided by the ion concentration on the inside of the cell. The subscript K represents the ion being considered, which in this case is the potassium. Here, T is the temperature, N is the valence number of the ion, for instance, plus 1 for potassium, R is the gas constant, and F is Faraday's constant. Note that overall, the Nernst potential represents the difference between the inside and outside potentials of a single ion. You can only get a potential difference of ions that are permeable to the cell membrane. If the cell membrane won't allow a specific ion through, then its concentration ratio becomes zero divided by zero. At body temperature, RT divided by F can be simplified to 26 millivolts. If we want to take the log rather than the natural log, then the equation becomes EK equals 62 millivolts times log 10 of the concentration of the potassium ion outside of the cell divided by the ion concentration of potassium inside of the cell. More realistically, cell membranes depend on permeabilities of a lot of different ions. In this case, the potential can be given by the Goldman-Hodgkin-Katz equation, where E equals RT divided by F times the natural log of the concentrations of potassium, sodium, and chlorine, P here stands for the permeability of the membrane to each ion. Note here that chlorine has a different concentration gradient than Na plus and K plus. This is due to the fact that the valence number of chlorine is negative one. This equation accounts for this negative one value by flipping the concentration ratio to inside divided by outside. In an example, say that the cell membrane doesn't allow potassium or sodium ions to pass through and the permeability is thus zero for each ion. Then, the equation becomes E equals RT divided by F times the natural log of the permeability of chlorine times the inside concentration of chlorine divided by the permeability of chlorine times the outside concentration of chlorine. This eliminates the permeability value since it gets canceled out in the numerator and denominator. We see that E equals RT divided by F times the natural log of the inside concentration divided by the outside concentration. If we wanted to, we could write this as a negative RT divided by F times the outside concentration divided by the inside concentration as if we were using the value of negative one for N to account for the valence of chlorine. When measuring the Nernst potential, we can see that we measure from positive to negative using electrodes. If the positive is measured from the outside of the cell and the ion concentration outside the cell is low compared to the concentration inside of the cell, which is at the negative node, then we will get a negative Nernst potential. We get a negative Nernst potential because the diffusion across the membrane from high to low, or inside to outside the cell, is going against the electric field, measuring the potential difference. Alrighty, catch the next video for some examples.